y'all. Hair still kind of not on fleek at all. Haven't had time to braid, just suck it down. So still doing the natural look. But uh, one, a young guy had asked me, could I do a video on um, tractor protection valves? Now this is going to be kind of a basic cover on what I know so far of it. You don't have to always take my word for it. I'm just introducing you to the topic so that you can always just, you know, take it upon yourself to do the full research to get your knowledge. So, all right, part of the air system, obviously, is glad hands. I'm at a uh, shipper, so some of these places where you come, they lock your, um, they lock your trailer brake line up because I guess people try to pull off to where when a forklift is going on and off the truck, you know, they tell you or whatever. So they'll actually lock this up. So I can't do the full demonstration of what I would like to do. I'm just gonna kind of talk and walk y'all through it. So this is your trailer brake line that comes from when you push your red um, tractor valve in. So let's go inside the truck so that I can, you know, talk to y'all about these valves. Man, that sun is beaming. All right, now you have a air system which is controlled by a pressure PSI system. Now, your system has to be fully charged from 100 PSI to a maximum of 135. And on like old, old trucks, like super old classic trucks, it used to be from 80 PSI to 135. But now most of the new trucks is like 105 to 135, which is maximum charge. So you have, let me position y'all to see. You have your two gauges. I went over gauges in the other video. You have two gauges, you know, you have a primary and secondary tank. Now, when you know that it's charged, you know, it comes to this line right here on both tanks to show you that it's fully charged. But another way to know that it's fully charged is you'll hear the air dryer, you know, like hiss, like tss. You'll hear that sound to know, like the that means the governor cut off to where it stopped the compressor from pumping air into your tanks. So that air dryer will, you know, piss off the, you know, toxic, uh, you know, gum or whatever. Like piss off, like let you know that your system is fully charged. So if your system is not leaking air, there's no bad brake chambers or no bad airlines or nothing's leaking. If everything is fully charged and it's holding the charge, your your air tanks will maintain the the um what is this? The pointer, it is stated it won't it won't drop down. And then the way you'll know it's fully charged too, you'll be able to push both of these valves in without them popping out because these won't push in and stay in if your system is not charged because what makes both of these valves go in is the fact that there's enough air built in the system to hold the piston back. Now the mechanism that is behind this whole setup is it's like a little chamber and then the chamber is a piston. I'm gonna have to call you back mom. But like I said, there's a chamber and there's a piston inside of it. So when you pushing on this tractor valve or trailer valve, you pushing in a piston. What holds that piston back is when your system is fully charged up with the proper amount of air. All that air holds that piston back, which allows, like there's two openings for your service brake air to come in and for your trailer brake air to come in. So once the air is holding back that piston, it allows the air to come in to expand, um, you know, to release the springs on your trailer because your trailer has um, springs and when the air is not charged, the springs set to keep your trailer from moving. But when the air is built up, it's relying on the air, not the springs anymore, which releases the springs. So I said there's two openings to the chamber and um, where the piston is at for that valve. So when you push a service brake, that's what controls the brakes on the trailer. Now, um, like I said, you always gotta make sure that your system is fully charged. Now, as far as how to check it, I can't really um, do that right now. Like I showed y'all before, they got my um, they got my um, my trailer brake line off, so I can't really start it to really kind of show y'all. But if you in truck and school already, I'm sure they showing y'all pre trips. You have to pretty much, um, you know, you pump your pedal. Every time you pump your pedal, you lose it. air pressure. So you pump your pedal down until it gets to 60. Usually at 60, the lights start beeping, buzzing, 
and then usually when it get below 40 or even 20 psi that's when your tractor valves will pop out so that's the way to check it you just pump your brake pump 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 and once it get below between 20 to 40 psi's it'll pop out that's how you know that that piston in that chamber is working with your um your, tra your trailer valve protective valve so you know if it's not popping out then you got a defect in in that uh, valve that piston system so you definitely gonna have to get that checked out you know because there i was um looking at this movie it was called big rig movie and it pretty much gathered together a whole bunch of truckers and one of these truckers said that he was driving and it was a detour so they detoured to another route but it was a really steep hill and he was going down the, down the hill and he looked at his mirrors and his trailer brakes got on fire for what reason i don't know but obviously you know lines burnt up everything's burning up so his full air system gave out on him to where he had no brakes and he was going down the hill over 100 miles per hour i think it was near a casino or something and you know he knew he was going to kill somebody and he figured he'd rather just sacrifice himself before he killed like a whole crowd of people so he ran his truck off the cliff but luckily people seen his truck go over the cliff and um i'm guessing when he went over the cliff it threw him out the seat so the uh stirring column actually you know went and pierced the seat but luckily it threw him before it could pierce him while he was in the seat and bystander just stood by and helped him out and I mean, he had a lot of um, injuries, but he made it. So what I say that to say is, you don't want your your air brakes going out on you at all because this is an 80,000 pound vehicle, a four ton vehicle that when there's no way to stop it, what are you gonna do? So it can end that fatality of you or a fatality of you and others. And you know, that's a great question. I didn't really get your name, but that's a great question to wanna know because you always when you do your pre-trip definitely got to make sure your brakes work because like i said that's your lifeline in driving this truck like you know a car like um tune goodwin i, I tell y'all watch his videos and he had a good analogy that when you drive a car that's like having a knife but when when you drive a, um a truck i forgot i might not be worth a word with it but that's pretty much like having a missile you driving a dang missile on wheels you can kill a whole lot of people with a missile so you got to be really careful when you behind something of this magnitude like this ain't no joke like driving driving this big thing i don't know if y'all can see but yeah driving this big rig just in this truck just driving this thing it look all sweet and dandy but there's a lot of responsibility that come behind being behind this wheel and operating a truck that's why they try to call us professional professional drivers because you have to be and you have a lot to consider when you're driving you have your you know you got to do make sure your truck is running right you got to do your pre-trip you have to be observant you have to uh you even have to drive for other people like they say if somebody hits us no matter if they're if it's their fault or not we still are at fault because we supposed to be in a quote-unquote professional drivers so just about any type of accident that occurs 99 or I say 95 to 99% of the time the truck driver is at fault and they catch a whole lot of flack and sometimes get shut down for years or forever because of that even though it wasn't our fault so yeah that's a lot that comes behind that and I'll do a part two of this since I could because I'm you know I like to demonstrate and walk y'all through everything to kind of show y'all exactly what I'm talking about so I'm just kind of touching real lightly on this topic but I will touch again when I'm able to um, you know once I get my lines hooked back up but it's kind of like I don't know if y'all understand mechanical lingo but I wish I had the actual piece to show y'all as I walk y'all through it maybe I could draw a pit map fact the next video I'm gonna draw a picture so when I talk about it I can kind of get y'all to follow me more because when you talk about mechanical lingo you're like what the fuck is she talking about I don't get that shit so all right y'all time is the essence I gotta get ready to go they got me going to Tennessee, so I got to see if they got my bills going so I can get on the road. All right, tell them bye, Lainey. Tell them deuces. Deuces. No? No deuces? Well, I do it for the deuces. Uh, deuces. 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 Deuces.